I love when fighters uh, or other people or anybody else give us advice on this incredibly successful business that we built. Uh, it, it, it cracks me up. Last week, news broke that Nate Diaz would be taking on the undefeated boogeyman of the UFC, Hamzat Chemaev, at UFC 279. Now, after hearing this, the MMA community was divided. Not between who would win, but rather if this fight had legitimate merit to be made because of the difference in ranking, plus Diaz's contract dispute situation with the UFC. Many fighters took to Twitter and gave interviews to shed some light on this situation. So let's take a look at what the MMA world has been buzzing about recently. Fighter Reaction If you're the UFC, the last thing you want to hear when you announce a new fight is that it isn't an assassination attempt. But that was precisely the reaction of former welterweight title contender and UFC broadcaster Dan Hardy, once the news had broken. So let's go ahead and hear from Hardy himself as he explains his thoughts on the matchup. It just it just feels like it, it feels like we're getting to the point where someone should start thinking about pressing charges. It it's, it doesn't feel like a fair fight. It feels like a very very cruel thing to do to someone that is a legitimate legend. Because they've spoken out against the organization, they're going to get executed live on TV. That's kind of how it feels. And 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 I, and it just it makes me feel uncomfortable to think that that's the way it's going to go down. I, I hope, desperately hope, that Nate at least comes through it all right. But after watching what what Hamzat did to to Reese McKee and to uh, you know to John Phillips, yes, of course, Nate's got good jujitsu. But there comes a point where jujitsu is nullified by good wrestling. It happened in the early days of the UFC, and it would happen against Nate if it hits the floor. I think he gets nullified, and I think he gets beaten up horrendously from the top position. I think it's going to be uncomfortable to watch. And I think it's going to leave the UFC in a very, very bad light. And I just hope Nate comes through it all right, because I think he's got good opportunities outside the UFC. It's just a shame that they're going to do this assassination attempt on him before he leaves. Dan Hardy's reaction wasn't unique either. For the most part, MMA fans and fighters are united in their opinion of the matchup. It's hard to see this one going well for Diaz, a sentiment that former UFC fighter and Bellator and one FC champion Ben Askren expressed as he tweeted out, this might be really ugly. Justin Gaethje, the former number one contender at lightweight, also chimed in after the news came out that Diaz would be fighting Chemayev. Let us hear what he has to say, but keep in mind, Gaethje and Diaz have had quite a few verbal back and forth in the past. If he's fighting Kamzat next, then I gotta give him some credit. <laughs> you don't see that fight going his way? I don't know. Of course not. <laughs> but, but, you know, again, I'm a fan of the sport because anything can happen at any time. But he doesn't, what's he going to, he's not going to out-wrestle him. He doesn't have, he doesn't even have the power to shut, I mean, to shut someone's light out on accident, you know. So, no, no chance. He is a 0% chance. 1% chance. Gaethje isn't the only one giving Diaz less than 1% chance of winning. In fact, the betting odds favored Chemayev with negative 1100, which are some of the most lopsided odds, especially for a main event fight in a very long time. However, there are a few backing the Stockton bad boy. Top 10 welterweight Bilal Muhammad showed support for Nate Diaz as he tweeted out, let's go Nate, hashtag 209. Now, hoping Diaz can pull off the upset win, Bilal also said, I hope Nate and Leon both win and ruin everyone's plans which would be quite the story. Now, speaking of Leon Edwards, the number one welterweight contender who takes on Kamaru Usman for the title shortly had the following to say about this matchup. Um, I if I put money on it, I'd probably go Hamzat, you know, and um, but I would love Nate, Nate to get it done. He's done so much for the company, and um, I wish they gave him like a, probably like another veteran, probably, just a nice fight to bow out to, you know, and to give him like an up-and-coming guy that's had like, what, four or five fights in the UFC, and, a wrestler guy as well, you know, I think it's fucked up really. <laughs> you should have given him more of a better, better fight, but I'd love late Nate to get it done, but like I said, if I'm, if I'm a betting man, I'd probably go Hamza. Edwards is the last man to fight Diaz, in which Diaz managed to rock Edwards in the dying minutes of the last round. So perhaps Edwards knows that Diaz has it in him to pull off the upset. 
while UFC fighter Philip Rowe had a more tongue-in-cheek response to the fight news as he showed support for Nate but ultimately picked the undefeated Hamzat via a dominant win. As he tweeted out, Nate Diaz has fought elite competition, has world-class jiu-jitsu, and is as confident as they come in this fight game. Everyone wants to talk about this being a bad matchup, you're crazy, I got Hamzat by TKO in the first. The early finish is what seems to be the consensus in the MMA community thus far. But another person that has showed support for Diaz is UFC commentator and the host of one of the most popular podcasts on the planet, Joe Rogan. In an episode with his guest Cameron Haynes, Rogan said this about the potential matchup. I don't want to see Chimaev fight Nate Diaz. I don't really want that. The only reason I would be interested in seeing that is because Nate Diaz will find out if you're for real. Nate is a beast. He's such a warrior. Rogan continued to say, if Nate gets paid big for that fight, if they set up a main event somewhere, Hamzat and Nate for a title elimination fight, I think if every fight went 100 rounds, Nate would never lose. Well, too bad the fight is only a five rounder. Meanwhile, former light heavyweight and heavyweight champion of the world Daniel Cormier believes that this fight is a mismatch. But let's hear from the champ himself about what he thinks of the main event. This kid is 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 dangerous. He has a ton of power. And like you said, what we saw in the Gilbert Burns fight is that he's tough. He's not going to give up on himself. So maybe he seemed as though he wasn't as dominant in that fight. But we saw him against another guy that's right at the top of the division, go through the fire and not only win, but win in what can be considered one of the best fights that we've seen all year. So I just think that these guys are at different points in their careers right now. And I, I do believe it's a mismatch. And Nate's going to say something to me, but I hope he understands that I'm doing my job, you know? The main event fighters reaction. The response from the two main event fighters has been interesting as well. Hamzat has likened the fight to a funeral, as per ESPN's Brett Okamoto, to whom Hamzat provided an exclusive quote saying, I am going to handle Nate Diaz's funeral with the UFC. While Nate Diaz's camp have claimed that this was the exact matchup they were wanting anyway, as Okamoto tweeted, Nate Diaz's representative Zach Rosenfield confirms the date and opponent of Diaz's next appearance to ESPN adds this is a fight that Nate has been asking for since the middle of April. So it doesn't seem like Diaz is as concerned as the rest of the MMA community with this matchup. Perhaps a reason for this is that he's already done the impossible in the past when he choked out Conor McGregor at UFC 196, handing Conor his first loss in the UFC. Jake Paul's reaction Another interested party in this whole deal is the YouTube boxing sensation Jake Paul. For a while now, it has been rumored that Diaz wants out of the UFC so he can go box Jake Paul and make a boatload of money. It seems as if Diaz is one step closer to this goal. Jake seems to be all about this plan as well as he showed support for his potential future opponent in the following tweet, Better believe I'm putting my money on Nate Diaz to win versus fake Habib. The fight itself. Hamzat Chemaev is currently 11-0, coming off of a fight of the year candidate win against Gilbert Burns. Now, typically, Chimaev makes quick work of his opponents as he's beaten four of his five UFC opponents within two rounds. While Nate Diaz has a storied career with the UFC dating all the way back to 2007, his crowning achievement was beating Conor McGregor and propelling himself to superstardom, along with his attitude and the way that he carries himself. Although Diaz is on a two-fight losing streak and recently turned 37 years old, it's not hard to see what's going on here. Nate Diaz has had an extensive back and forth with the UFC because this is his last fight on his contract. Diaz has been pleading with the UFC for his final fight for months now so he could be free of them. He has even turned down contract extension talk. So many fighters feel as if this is Dana White and UFC's way of punishing the MMA legend for not playing ball. The fight will be the headline event of the September 10th pay-per-view UFC 279, and this will be a rare moment where the main event of a numbered card will not have a title fight, as the final bout of the night, which does speak volumes about the matchup and the expectations placed on the main event fighter's shoulders.